My friends, we are going to grow and get better together. This is not about me. This is about us. Welcome to Win Today with Johnny Martin. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Win Today with your boy, Johnny Martin. Very, very excited to have a guest with us uh, via phone call today. We're going to talk about him in just a couple minutes. But as always, a special shout out and thank you to our co-producers of the show, Mr. Dylan Pilon from Cloud9 Marketing Group. What's up, D? Good to have you here. How are we doing? Life is good, man. Thanks so much. And as always, the man behind the media and audio, Donnie Cavanaugh from Seven Roads Media. Donnie, what's up, man? Hey, Johnny. How you doing? Doing well, man. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, we have had a string, fellas, of uh, phenomenal uh, discussions around a myriad of topics that we hope, uh, where, where the goal for us remains the same, where we hope that... Uh, we have or are starting to empower others and inspire others to tap into their talents, strengths, and gifts and to maximize every day that they're so blessed to be on this earth. Uh, as I was putting this podcast together and we were thinking about folks to get on, and, and for those of you that are listening, as we get this journey rolling here, we are literally going to have on guests from all different walks of life, from entertainment, education, medicine, uh, the arts, athletics, sports and nutrition, strength and conditioning, all who are living in one way or another in a way that based on how they do business every day will inspire others to go out and win their day. Today's guest I am uh, so excited to have on with us is a young man by the name of Eric Osberg. Uh, a little background on Eric, but I certainly want him to talk to you about his story. Uh, Eric is a professional baseball player who right now is attached with the Tampa Bay Rays organization. He's a catcher, uh, and he's a young man who uh, was born and raised in Western Massachusetts uh, and is now one step closer to his big league dreams. So without any further ado, uh, I'd like to welcome you uh, all to my good friend, professional baseball player Eric Osberg. What's up, E? Great to have you, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, love what you're doing here. Thank you, man. And, uh, I'm actually down in Florida. I uh, just finished up our workouts about two hours ago. So uh, I'm hanging out. I'm excited. Now, we are super, super excited to have you. And that's the thing is when, when you know, you and I have done some work together uh, individually. But when I was talking to Donnie and Dylan about guests I wanted to have on, I knew you would be excited to do it. Uh, and I know that's how you live your life every day, which is a, a, an awesome fit for what we're trying to do here on the show. So we couldn't be more fired up to have you, man. So tell me about, uh, tell us all about where you're at right now and sort of what the journey looks like for you as we speak this afternoon. Well, as of today, uh, I'm down for early workouts in spring training, uh, minor league spring training. So I'm, you know, I was drafted last year, um, 2017 draft and played uh, half a season down in the GCL, uh, which is rookie ball um, for the Rays. Uh, before going to Instructs um, in October, I came home and trained and, and uh, was preparing for my first spring training, my first full season with the Rays. Um, being that it's my first spring training, I wanted to get down early, um, get a lay of the land, just sort of show face a little bit um, and get comfortable. You know, obviously up in uh, Mass, it's cold, it's getting warmer, but it's cold up there. Sure. Uh, the weather's a lot different down here. So I get down early and get acclimated to uh, the situation and, and just get comfortable formal, uh, you know, spring training games start up in early March. Um, and we're just doing a bunch of a workout stuff, um, with the big league team and, um, the other guys down here early right now. So you've been, you've been down there for how long, bud? Uh, about a week now. And all of the stuff that you, you guys are doing down there right now are, uh, completely optional workouts. Yeah. Yeah. These are optional. Um, I have to, you know, we're, I'm, I'm not with, not everybody in the team is here or in the organization is here yet. Um, I'm staying in the Airbnb um, before they move me into the team hotel March 1st over uh, over the place we stay at. So, yeah, it's, these are optional, but um, in my mind, not really optional because uh, I just want to get out and, and get acclimated to the weather and, and, and get moving a little bit and get in front of some, some coaches and, sure. and just show what I've been doing pretty much because I'm ready to ball this year. Any baseball related stuff yet, bud, or is it just pretty much getting yourself moving, rolling yeah. around? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, we're going, you know, full BPs, uh, full catcher, just skill sessions, bullpens, the whole nine yards. We'll start getting some live BPs and some uh, 
some scrimmage action, uh, I believe, next week. Uh, but yeah, this is everything but everything but a game going on right now. Oh, that is awesome. How, how are you doing so far? How do you feel like your your performance so far? I'm actually I'm fired up. I I, I wouldn't have. You're always fired up, man. You're always I fired up. I have I wouldn't have changed the thing um, up to this point. I'm really happy with how I've swung. Uh, I've made a lot of adjustments in the off season, trying to lock in my swing. Um, and, and my preparation day to day is is has been really good um, mentally and uh, physically in the weight room. And I'm really happy with how I performed thus far. That's great. Um, and feel really good about this season. So right. a lot of guys have taken note. So I'm happy. So let me, I want to backtrack a little bit, bud, because, you know, I'm familiar with your history. But for those of you that are listening to the show, just to give you a little bit of a, a background on Eric. Eric's a, a guy from Western Mass, ended up going to play at a Division One school, University of Hartford. Uh, and at one point in his career, and correct me if I'm wrong, E, but, but I believe it was your junior year, this is a guy who led the nation, the entire country, at, in baseball, in um, batting average, he had a 500 batting average. He was uh, 43 of 86 with six homers, 24 RBIs in only 24 games. Now, listen, I'm not a baseball guy. The platform of this podcast is not centered around baseball specifically. But when you talk about uh, the best baseball players in the country that are attracting the eyes of major league baseball players, Eric was right up at the uh, top of the list. And so... And then you were injured, correct? Yes, yes. So I was. I was last year. It was my junior season at uh, University of Hartford, and uh, it was. It was. It was a dream year in every way, man. I was uh, kind of a, a a fringe pro prospect coming out of high school. You know, I was a Division One player, but I had a lot to work on. I was under the radar in a lot of scouting circles, and I was. I always had a chip on my shoulder about that, and I got to Hartford and just was working progressively. Um, and, and got to that junior year, which is when you're eligible for the MLB draft, um, you become eligible your junior year. So it's a very important year and everything. It was a dream season, man. And then unfortunately I got hurt on a freak slide up at UMaine, um, tore a knee ligament on, uh, just a awkward slide at the plate, the plate. And, uh, someone was sliding, season. someone was sliding into you and your position as a catcher or you were, sli- uh, I was sliding into home. We, they had a little turf set up up there and. I just replaced the turf up at the home plate and there was a ridge in the turf and my knee just kind of clicked the, clicked the ridge the right way and um, tore a ligament. And, and that was the end of the, the dream season, uh, unfortunately. Do you feel like that injury uh, affected where you were drafted? Yeah, it absolutely did. Um, as sad as it is to say, I mean, you know, I'm thankful. I'm so thankful for, to the Rays and um the guys over there, the scouting department department to give me an opportunity that they did. But yeah, it certainly uh, affected my position. Now I was a top 200 uh, prospect baseball America. I was getting my name onto these lists that I've been dreaming about, you know, since forever. And, um, you know, the, 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 I didn't need surgery. You know, if I had torn my ACL and needed surgery, I might not be talking to you right now in this position. You know, sure. Know. So, sure. um, it, it, the sort of the, the unknown of where I was at and, you know, being a top 10 round guy going from being like a top seven to eight round guy, um, with slotted money. Um, the injury definitely kind of pushed me out of that conversation a little bit, but you know, we're still, I'm still very happy with where I got drafted. You know, sure. so there's 40, 40 rounds in the MLB draft. Uh, I was lucky enough to get taken a 13th round. So it all worked out. And, and, uh, but you know, I, I still hold a little bit of chip on my shoulder. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, I should have gone higher, you know, I'm going to show you. You know, do you feel like that's an interesting point, you know, because we talk a lot on the show about um, adapting to failure and learning from failure and setbacks primarily. So the injury for you clearly wasn't a failure, but it was certainly a setback. And remember, for those of you that are listening, this isn't some dude who um, just lost his uh, junior year college season, but this is a dude who was on the radar uh, and obviously still is based on his current position. But this is a guy that was on the radar to be a top prospect catcher uh, in professional baseball. Now, in most of our worlds, when we run into setbacks or we run into things that are uncomfortable, um, uh, it, it really, a lot of us give up. We throw in the towel. This is a guy that was faced with a really tough decision, but but so much of that was out of his control. And I would guess, you know, you certainly don't have to mention the specifics on the air, but I would guess 
in Major League Baseball, just like in other sports, e that the lower you're drafted, uh, the less likely you are to receive a pretty significant signing bonus. So in your case, that's correct. That's absolutely correct. It's all business. Yeah. So in your case, we're not just talking about the ability to play baseball, but now we're talking about serious money um, to, and this is your career. You know, this is your job. So it, it, I'm sure that was a major setback for you. It was. It absolutely was. Um, definitely, you know, lost out on lost out on on money, you know. But but if you told me, you know, four years ago when I got to college, like give you a 13th round pick, uh, get my last year of school paid for, you know, I would have jumped for joy. You know what I mean? So it kind of showed me, you know, the change in my mindset and sort of the development that I had as a player. And and, and I quickly realized life is expensive, man, when you get out of school. But um, <laughs> But I'm happy. I'm happy with it, man. I got no complaints. It, it's all good. I, I, uh, I just kind of. It was never really about the money, you know. For me, like in, in the fact that, you know, I slipped a little bit, slipped out of the top ten. And for those who don't know, the top ten rounds are slotted rounds, um, money wise. And and I and I never really cared if I would be in that top ten. Um, until or not. until you realized how much you lost, right? <laughs> yeah, until, yeah. Until I realized, you know, until I realized, hey, I'm leading the country in hitting, and I'm getting all this national attention. I'm thinking, wow, like I could really set myself up nice, and and I feel that I've earned, you know, myself to be in this position. I've earned this recognition. I, I've done all the hard work. I've given up a lot. So, so when it when I got hurt, I, I felt a little bit vindicated. I felt like man like people might forget people you know i might not sure. get drafted or whatever but but it, it, you know it worked out really well uh but but i wanted to be tabbed as like that high pick like because i want that more than the money you know i wanted to be like a guy that, with a hot with a with a small number next to my name and yeah, really absolutely. it doesn't matter because when you show up to camp man it doesn't matter dude we got everybody here um and everybody's balling but um for, but for my own personal pride reasons that was like what i wanted and 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 I kind of had to let that go because, you know, just like in college, man, it doesn't matter who's got scholarships, who's a walk-on. Once you show up to play, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, the, be- so. the best players are going to play. Do you feel like that that injury and that um, how you may have dropped in the draft a little bit, do you feel like that that has changed your mindset in a positive way to, to work harder or prepare more um, intensely for what you're doing right now? Yeah, I think uh, – I don't think – it made me work harder. I mean, I was working hard regardless, um, you know, equally, but it's, it's more the, the, the mental side of, of being okay with what happened. And, and I still wish that I could go back to Hartford and sort of finish that year, you know, sure. like more of not, you know, if I was still going to take in the 13th round, whatever, like that, that's whatever I'm, I'm playing professional baseball. It's the dream, but it's more like what would have happened that season, you know, accomplishing goals that I had wanted to accomplish in college, you know, being an All-American, being in that discussion, you know, putting myself up there with the top guys in the SEC and the Pac-12 um, from, you know, a mid-major school in Connecticut. I was I would have loved to sort of do that. Um, but that those are those are a lot of the – correct me if I'm wrong, but those are a lot of the same cats that you are playing with now and some of whom haven't – didn't even get drafted, didn't even make it to a team, right? So in a yeah, lot of ways, correct. So in a lot of ways you're in a, a better position than they are. That's a, that's a, that's, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you know, I've thought about that a lot, but I think it was the mental uh, side of the whole ordeal of being okay with things that you can't control. Injuries happen. Um, you know, it's a, a very big part of a very fragile business that we're in. Um, so I think that that's the main the main thing is being okay with it um, and mentally. Sure, uh, I, I do want to talk to you a, a little bit, but only because uh, you know. I've gotten to know you pretty well over the last couple of years, but for our, for our listeners, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about your preparation in the off season because Eric is one of those guys, you know, he's one of those guys that we talk about on this show all the time. We talk a lot about finding your why uh, and then working to define your why and create that why in your life for Eric. Uh, obviously the why right now in his life is uh, trying to make it to the very highest level he can as a professional athlete, but I, I'm, I really want you to share sort of your mindset and also your your approach to training in the off season because Eric, for those of you that are listening, he is an animal in the off season, and I say that uh, in the most positive sense possible. This is a guy that opens the gym 
in the morning and closes the gym in the afternoon. And he's not wasting time while he's there. He does everything with intention. Uh, he does everything at the maximum amount of effort required to yield the best results. And he's just a dude that I've always watched over the last couple of years that understands, truly understands the privilege and the blessing he's been given with the talents that he has. And he's one of those guys that just doesn't waste a minute on those talents. And that's something that I've always had a ton of respect for you for, E, in, in watching how you prepare. So if you were to, if you know, talking to the people that are listening right now, walk them through what the offseason looks like for you, not just from a baseball perspective, but from a mindset perspective. What do you do to prepare to be a professional athlete from March until September, hopefully? Yeah, well, are you talking about my, yeah, off season, right? I yeah. really appreciate those comments. You know, I, I mean, this off season was my first professional off season. Obviously, you know, being in college, you saw me in college um, yeah. and in high school, you have off seasons. They're different, differently set up. You know, we have to go to school. I absolutely love the off season, man, because you take what you, you take in the information from the season, you get into, you get home and you say, all right, I want to be better at this, this, and this. And we just go attack it, man. I, I, I had a pretty uh, long, a lot of long days up at uh, AP Academy, which is where I trained in the off season uh, up in Palmer, Mass. And, you know, I'd get there at nine ten, um, and train till four or five, but just crushing lifts, flexibility, swinging it, um, you know, pitch recognition, defensive stuff, and then go right into giving lessons uh, till about eight or nine. Those were long days, and, and, and but I'm kind of a gym rat guy. Like, I love being in the gym, love sw just being in the cage, being around other baseball players, um, being a mentor for some younger players, and then receiving mentorship from others. Um, and it's just fun to do. And the fact that it's my profession and and my life is dependent on, on this is another obviously huge factor, but but it, but first and foremost, it's it's just fun to get better at stuff. And I was not happy with a lot of the things that I did in my first professional season. I I really felt like I left a lot on the table. Um, I wanted to come home and and lock my swing in and just become an absolute beast uh, to come into this spring training. And I really uh, I didn't. You're pretty right about that. I did not waste an hour of my time up at AP. You know, it was a a very focused effort the entire way. Sure. Do you, but do you feel like E that, you know, in terms of what you just shared with us around your, your training and the fact that you just love the process that you're committed to the process. Do you think that's what's helped separate you uh, from maybe others in, in your world, which is baseball that might have had uh, equal talent, but just didn't learn to love the process and the grind as much as you do? Do you think that's that's a separator? Have you noticed that to be a separator for you in your work uh, with guys that they may be super talented, but when you get to the level that you're at, shit, everybody is, they're the best in the world at what they do. So have you found that your willingness to trust the process and embrace the process and embrace the stuff that sucks, do you think that's helped separate you from other folks that may be chasing the same dream? One hundred percent, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. I describe myself as a grinder. I'm a guy, you know. I wasn't a flashy prospect in high school. Like I had to earn the eyes that I got. You know, being a five ten, you know, guy. You know, was never a physical specimen. I, I had to do the little things and, and get better in certain areas and 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 truly perform everywhere I went uh, to to get noticed. I did. I didn't get by on my physical stature or my. Um, you know, who I, who I knew or, or, or getting invited to different like specific events or whatever. Like I had to just go and play well everywhere I went. And, um, well, that was in high school summer ball, getting recruited to college, you know, a bunch of colleges passed on me, UConn, BC, a bunch of the, the name brand sure. Northeast schools passed on me. So, so I always had to earn that. And, and for me again, and I, I tell people this, it's the fact that, you know, you can't have a plan B in my opinion. I, Everybody would say to me growing up, oh, I, I want to play professional baseball. And everybody's like, oh, that's great, you know, but make sure you have a plan B. And I'm like, I just never really developed a plan B at all because you got to work for that one thing and all of the things that you learn um, going for that plan A um, and when it doesn't work out can be applied to your next plan. 
um, in my opinion. Yeah, because there, want- is, there are still so many lessons along the way, right? A couple things that you shared that really resonate with me. Several times throughout this conversation, you, you not once have you used the word, I deserved it, you have, but you have used the word several times, I've earned it. And I love that because uh, I, I truly believe, and I share this on the podcast with guests, that we are owed absolutely nothing in this life. The, the, the Rays owe you nothing. Baseball owes you nothing. The world owes you nothing. And the fact that you seem to recognize that already, you seem to, to have this perspective like, I'm willing to go out and bust my ass and earn it all. And I want to go compete against the best in the world to earn it all. Uh, to me, I think says the most about the likelihood that not only will you have a level of success in baseball, but you just made another point, which I really want people to attach themselves to, which is uh, this is my only plan. But if this, yeah. but if this plan doesn't work out, I've learned things along the way that are going to make me successful and significant in whatever I choose to do next. And I think that's a huge piece. Um, I think for you that that continues to separate you from everybody else that might have the same amount of talent, but just doesn't have that mindset. How important is mindset for you? Uh, in terms of baseball. So it's a very physical game, just like all professional sports. How much do you work on the mental side of who Eric Osberg is and the mental side of preparation? And what are some things that you think you still need to work on? Yeah. Yeah. That's a very, that's a, there's a lot to that question. Yeah, there it's, is. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's an important question, you know? So, I mean, first and foremost, you know, I, I think a thing that separates me, you know, from other guys is, is my off the field habits. Um, I'm a very eccentric guy. I'm very, I have to be prepared. I have to do everything I feel necessary to be prepared for that specific day. Um, you know, I, I've never had a drink in my life, never smoked in my life a lot. And, and a lot of guys who, who are in this. Can I just, can I just stop baseball. you for, I just want to stop you for one second. That yeah. is amazing. For those of you that are listening, how old are you now, E? I'm 22, went through college, didn't have a drink. The whole was time. a was but, a uh, college athlete, a Division One college athlete. And by the way, you know we'll post uh, when, when we post the show notes. I'll show you listeners who this dude is, and we'll we'll talk at the end of the show about um, where you can find him on social media. But this is a a stud who I'm sure had plenty of opportunities to participate in the drinking scene, the drug scene. Uh, and for whatever reason, and I'd, I'd like you to expand upon that if you want, uh, has chosen not to, and then sort of get back yeah. to, you know, the mental side of things. I didn't mean to take you off them, but I just think that's amazing and a great message no, for it's, people it's that are listening. Something that's super important to me, man. A lot of people gave me crap for it. Um, but it's something that's like one of those rules in my head that I just won't break, you know? And, and the reason being, you know, I believe alcohol really is poison, man, for your brain. And, and, and in college, you know, there were, we had, there were parties and all that and, and opportunities to do dumb crap. But, um, you know, I felt like I wanted to be prepared for practice the next day. Cause we had practice every day, you know, weekends we had practice at 7 AM and, and a lot of my teammates, they would go out, I'd drive them somewhere or whatever. But in my mind, like if I'm going to be up till two and I got to get up at six for practice, like I'm not going to be ready to play that day. And, and that day, you know, if I have a bad day on Saturday, it's going to, transverse into a bad day on Sunday and then I'm catching up and I feel like I'm getting worse and and that's kind of how I always approached it and people thought I was crazy and always thought that you know I was I was way too uptight and I need to have more fun like when I was struggling people would be like just go have more fun like you never actually kick back and like have a drink and hang out like just just like get off the game for a while but I just couldn't do that and and, and, and now that I'm in the position I am now, a lot of people don't, nobody remembers who drank the most beers at the party. Nobody remembers who got the most girls. Everybody remembers that I got drafted. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's that's, that's, that's pr- kind of how I look at it, to be honest. So, yeah. And you know, I think part of it too is, you know, it maybe when, when your buddies were like, Hey man, you got to kick back and have fun. To me, it sounds like where you find your fun is in the preparation for, the game in the preparation, yes. like to me, in in all the years I've known you and just talking to you now, there are things that are coming through for me. But it's you're one of those dudes that you always I feel like we're preparing for the bigger picture. Yeah, I I find it fun to 
to do the little things, prepare mentally and physically for the game or the practice and then perform well and see sort of your, see the fruits of the labor, I guess, for a lack of better terms, I guess, you know, see progress in your performance through your preparation is fantastic because you have control over that stuff. Um, Without a doubt. You know, and, and I think that, you know, athletically, and I, I would tell this to any, I tell this to high school athletes when I talk to them as far as you know, your friends and you, you know, you talk about this too. You know, I've, I've heard you speak on this a few times, you know, picking your five closest friends, like, you know, what are they doing for you? You know, cause that, what, that shapes your world in, in every way. And um, if you really want something, you know, it's, it's good to have social time. It's good to, to, to kick back with them. But when you want to be as successful as you can, you're going to have a lot of acquaintances and few friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think you and I talked about that when we did some of our individual work together, you know, and I talk about it on the show is that I, I truly believe that for us and not so much as kids, cause you're still trying to find your way, but for you as an adult and us as adults, I think, you know, you, we become the sort of the sum of the five people that we choose to spend our intentional time with. And, um, so I think it's so important to choose wisely because it really, really has a, a tremendous effect, either positively or negatively, on on our journey. So it's a great yeah. point you bring up. You touched on before this what you touched on mental or preparation before I brought up the drinking thing. What did you touch on there? The well, I just uh, so uh, every every person, whether they're an athlete, a, a teenager, an adult, every person has struggles, right? Uh, and so for you as an athlete. Um, the struggles I would assume are magnified because of your position as a professional athlete, but what have been your biggest struggles? Would you say, um, not just from a baseball perspective, because I think for our listener, they want, they want the struggles to resonate with where they're at in their life as well. But what would you say your biggest personal struggles have been in trying to balance, uh, this, this dream to play in major league baseball, uh, with all the life stuff that goes on outside of it? Yeah, I mean, so we, you know, we just talking about, you know, the no drinking and everything. I always, I always did struggle and I still do big time. Um, and I work on it every day is trying to not let my performance um, dictate sort of my mood for the day and dictate how I am to other people and, and dictate sort of my self-worth in many ways. You know, Nick Ahmed has, has brought that up many times. Yeah, I've talked to Nick publicly, about it quite a bit. Publicly for, brought that up, yeah. For those, you that, for, that for those of you that don't know who Nick Ahmed is, Nick is a, a shortstop for the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's somebody that trains with uh, Eric in, in the offseason as well and, and just a great guy. But he spends a lot of time talking about sort of how in the beginning of his career – uh, he would define his worth based on his performance. So I think that's what you're talking about, E, as well, right? Yeah, but I mean, for every athlete in every way, that's like the biggest thing. And and I, but I would, t but I'm kind of like, I take it to the extreme though, because I get really upset with myself, and I would, I would um, find myself feeling bad, of, you know, depressed about just myself as a person. Like, and 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 I really struggled with that. I mean, my first year in professional baseball last summer, I was not playing. I was playing once a week. I was getting off this injury, um, and I wasn't feeling like I was getting enough reps, and I was frustrated with myself and, and my swings that I was taking and, and I'd go home and I would just lay in bed and pretty much just think about what a crappy day I had. And, and, and then I look for, you know, solace and acceptance and happiness and other things. And I, sure. and, and, and as an athlete, you know, you got to be careful with, you know, the people you talk to and the yeah. things you do. And I just like would feel myself looking for other people to, validate, validate me, other yeah. people to validate your self-worth yeah yeah just just what? any sort of validation and, and that's what every athlete goes goes through they won't you know whether they say it or not i mean every athlete goes through it so i'm working very hard to remove myself from performance and and understand like what i did that day it's not going to affect what i do the next day and I've, I've done a lot of you know i'm starting to write stuff down right sort of my reaction good of the day things that i liked that i did during the workout um, general goals for the day. It's something, you know, we talked about that a little bit in, early in the off season, sure. um, um, sort of goals that I would have personally for the day. And, and, you know, actually yesterday morning, you know, I wrote down in my little journal hitting journal, I got sort of like, all right, let's, let's smile. Let's, let's, um, greet all the coaches. Let's, you know, be a good teammate, be happy for others today and, and, and help the other catchers get better along with myself. And, and let's try to have fun. I mean, I, I, I sometimes don't have fun with the game and I, I work the game. I, 
I stress about it because it's really it's all I've ever known, and I want to be good. But but at the end of the day, it's yeah. a, you, you, at the end of the day, you're the one percent of the one percent that actually gets to play a game and call it a career, right? But it's not. Yeah, you, a lot of people oh, you get to go play baseball, but it's like you know, it, you know, and in, in its most simplest of forms, I should look at it that way. Like I gotta go play baseball. I gotta go play. I can't worry about all of the X's and O's and the preparation and, and who's watching and where am I going to be next season? Can I move up? Like how much money this, like it, but, but at the same time, it's a career. It's very hard to keep that out of your, out of your head. So that's so honest. I mean, count. I think, I think that's an honest uh, assessment. It's easy for outsiders to look in and say, Hey bro, you, you get to do what a pin needle of the population gets to do. And that is to play a sport. But in your world, it's much more than a sport. It's, your career and also yeah. your, your passion and purpose. And you are, I, I couldn't imagine how you couldn't be affected by performance numbers because that's at the end of the day, how you're measured as an athlete. You could be the nicest guy in the world. And listen, I, I we, you and I have a great relationship. I know who you are as a person, but I don't think anybody in major league baseball at the end of the day gives a shit about that as much as they do the numbers that you're going to produce this year because it's a business, right? Yeah, man, it is. I mean, but I've come to realize that the relationships you have and how you're perceived um, is really important as well. Um, nobody wants to be around a dickhead, you know what I mean? Of course not. For 160 days. Like, of course not. Um, and coaches need, neither. You know, you, you want to be a guy that – and I want to be a guy that, that's helping the pitchers that, that I work with and – and that's a good guy to be around and a good teammate. But for, but to me, for you, that's much more personal. That's that extends beyond baseball though. Right. But yeah, like, that's, be, that's yeah. who you are as a man. You want to be, you don't want to be, you don't want to be the guy that's a good, a quote unquote, good teammate just to be a good teammate. You want to actually care about the guys and that they're your friends and develop friendships over being like a good teammate, you know, cause everybody who says, you know, I want to be a good teammate, but, a lot of guys you can see just fake that and and it's pretty hard. easy to see right away they're not walking the walk yeah you want to be you want to be friends you want to develop friendships and then right. you're friends with everybody and you're you're having fun doing it then it becomes a lot easier and, sure. and again i felt very isolated last summer and in other times in my career too my freshman year of college struggled big time um with myself as a player and and in my mental state as well so it's very interesting the the ebbs and flows of it because I know this is you know I'm feeling good now but how am I going to feel two months ago you know two months from now it's going to be a it's an up and down ride and being able to manage those those feelings and and do you feel like do you feel like you're better prepared to deal with that stuff than you were say as a rookie or a junior in college yeah 100 percent you know I came in a pro ball I felt I was very uh, I was very ready to handle these these feelings and problems because I'd gone through a terrible season my freshman year after being a very sought after you know recruit at hartford being like a guy that was getting some attention in the media as a top recruit for our school you know i i kind of put a lot of pressure on myself and then i and then the same thing goes for the last season and, and i'd never been through a professional season until last year so right it was a things are i i think i'm i'm absolutely set up to have a fantastic year and a lot of that is because of the mental state that i'm in and just you know in in the you know, the power of now, you know, the book that you gave me and, and I piece through that frequently and good. Um, and, and the stuff that it talks about as well as some other books that I've been piecing through as well is just being able to be literally present. And it's so hard to do, but so easy to say it is one of the hardest things to do. I think in that life. means, yeah. Then that means you're learning and that, the fact that you recognize that means you're truly working on it because people say it all the time, be present, be where your feet are. It's a very easy concept, but it's very, very difficult to do consistently because we've been conditioned for so long with all of the other distractions we have in this world to try to do multiple things at one time. Uh, we're attached to our phone and, and multiple conversations and our brains are taking us to what we have to do an hour from now and a week from now that we lose the ability to just be present and truly view view moments, individual moments as blessings because we're already thinking about the next thing. And and that notion really can translate into your work as a baseball player, into anybody's life, is that you're, you're going to maximize your talent, strengths, and gifts when you're not focused on anything else except for what you're doing in that moment. Yeah, it's that's so true, and, and 
but but you like it's it sounds so cheesy and corny you know like i bet people listen and be like oh i've heard that before you know like but but i think that but i think that the the most important part of it is being able to discern that that's like an issue in your head and, and then being able to act on it and and sort of being able to throw away bad reps or throw away things that you don't like that happen at work and moving on to the next thing like and that's the stuff that takes practice because it's not easy to skill, do it's definitely a skill um 100 a skill that needs to be learned and i think it needs to be talked about to kids in, in high school and middle school even um because i was just always so worried about i was always good enough to have good games and then it, when i had a good game i'd be really happy at school the next day you know what i mean sure. and i was always good enough to just do it anyway but as I got older, you know, never really honing that skill and just kind of like riding the ups and downs and just like, all right, I'm going to get in next at bat. Like um, it started to take a toll on me and I really didn't like how I was like feeling and living. Yeah, because um, you're starting to be defined by your performance. That's what we were just talking about before. Speaking of, of kids, uh, what are have you at all or do you do you feel like you've had the time at all uh, since you've been signed on as a pro player? to use your status uh, as a professional athlete and the influence you would have over kids uh, to do some work with adolescents either back home or um, down in Florida where you're at now? Like, what, what are some of the things that you like to do to give back when you're not uh, preparing for your own career? Well, you know, I, it's really, that's probably honestly for me, the, one of the most fun things about being a professional athlete is, is having somewhat of a platform to, to help, you know, help kids. Cause in Massachusetts, we don't have a lot of pro guys. And when I was growing up, um, there were no pro players around when I was growing up, I was lucky to see a guy from UMass, you know, I, I was sure. like, Oh my God, like this guy's the best. Like, um, and, and, and so I've, I've been conscious of that. And, and so when I go home, like I always want to reach out to, to a kid, uh, who's playing the game. If I see a kid at AP, I gave tons of lessons this year up at AP Academy. Uh, That's awesome. Uh, I mean, five a day at least. And, and, and I was, and I want to give every kid a good experience and, and make them better because I understand that, you know, I know I'm in, I know I just finished rookie ball. I'm not in the big leagues or whatever. You can give me crap about that, but, but I'm a professional player. And, and if I was eight years old and there was a kid that was drafted, you know, last year, I would, I would be, all over I would it. be asking to shine his shoes, you know what I Absolutely. mean? Absolutely. Like I, I don't even know if I would have talked to him because I would have been that shy, you know. So been that so, nervous, right? So I, I like, I know that, and and I really want to help guys in the area because you know baseball in Western Mass, you know, needs to be better, and I want to be, you know, a, a resource for a lot of guys because I mean that's really what matters. You don't want to be that guy that that pro player is like, oh, he got drafted, and like. No, you know, he's cocky. You don't hear from him. Yeah, he forgot where he came from. Forgot about like, everybody else as well. I, yeah, dude. I love, I love the guys back home, man. I, I, you know, and I wouldn't be anything without a lot of people back home and I wouldn't have this opportunity. So I, I really try hard to, to just be like a, a, a cool guy to be around. I mean, I don't, uh, you you don't gotta come, yeah. come talk to me as a pro, a pro player, but helping kids just cause it's fun and allow them to have a fun experience with baseball and, 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 you know, cause there might not be a, another pro guy for a couple of years coming out of math. So that's right. You never know. So, I mean, it's, it's something that's very important to me, not from a, a PR perspective or a, or like a, a, a status pers- perspective, really. I mean, I generally enjoy, you know, coaching and, and having fun with kids cause it kind of allows you to think like, wow, like I remember that being that age and I remember to being dreaming to be in the position that I'm in. You know. Sure. And I think also because it's a game that you absolutely love and still love and that shines through when you work with kids. It has certainly shown through in this conversation that we've been able to share today. Uh, super, super grateful for your time. Before we wrap, though, um, talk you know, to I also if I, if I touch on that real quick, I also think it's important you know, if you you have the opportunity to teach to teach anything, um, not just baseball or whatever sport, but if you're able to teach anything to somebody else, I've kind of found that that centers you very well. I've found that it allows you to understand that thing a lot better because um, you've got to break it down it, to explain it. What, what was that? Be- because you've got to break it down to explain it for somebody who you have to work under the assumption that they don't know anything about it. And so while you break it down for them, you're reinforcing those fundamentals for yourself, right? Yeah. It's it, you learned so much through teaching another guy and, and learn through communication and what works 
and, and the best ways to communicate with others. I mean, communication is the most important skill in life, I believe. Um, you which know, is being lost, anybody, which is being lost. I don't, yeah, nobody teaches it in school. It doesn't matter. And honestly, man, it doesn't matter what you get in math, what, what your grades are, man. It matters about who you are and, and, and do people like you? Are you able to communicate with other people? Are you able to be respectful? Do you have manners? And that gets lost. I, th- I see it lost, especially now. Sure. Um, what a phenomenal, phenomenal message for those of you that are listening to the show that um, are parents yourselves or have kids that are into sports. Uh, what be- what better way to convey this message of integrity, character, respect, and hard work? Uh, tune the kids in. Sit down at dinner or after dinner. Let them listen to this episode with Eric and then have a real honest discussion with them around uh, whether or not they think that they're doing their best to live this way. This is exactly why I wanted to speak to you, E, uh, because I know you walk the walk. Um, we are um, all very excited for your journey. Certainly, certainly appreciative of your time. I know we'll talk uh, privately throughout the season regularly. Uh, but where can the folks that listen to win today, where can they find you, buddy? Yeah, I mean, my biggest platform is Instagram. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've become big on there, uh, and it's my main sort of platform for just my own as an athlete, see things I'm up to, see, you know, I got a lot of uh, cool companies that I work with now that um, I could, you know, uh, turn on to a lot of you guys and, and uh, some sure. really cool people that I not do business with, but I, I like what they do, and I want to promote them, you know, myself on my Instagram. And, um, yeah, so that's Eric Osberg 21, E-R-I-K-O-S-T-B-E-R-G 21. Um, and then obviously I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, but I, I really go through Instagram. So those of you that are listening, if you want to find, uh, Eric, check him out at Eric, E R I K Osberg, O S T B E R G 21 on Instagram. You know, uh, and if anybody wants to message me on there, you know, if people listen, um, i I respond to every message I get, um, you know, from anybody. So that's something I also take pride in. I used to send letters to athletes as a kid. Um, nowadays, a lot of kids, kind of like messaging them on Instagram is like the new thing. That's sure. kind of like me going to the post office and mailing a letter. So I respond to everybody. So, you know, if you want to just get to know me a little bit, I'd love to talk to you guys in any way. I can't tell you how appreciative we are for that. Uh, and again, buddy, we wish you well. I, I love you, man. I know you're going to, you're going to attack it each day with uh, attention and purpose uh, and excited to watch this journey unfold for you. On behalf of uh, Cloud9 Marketing Group, Seven Roads Media, and certainly uh, myself, uh, so honored to call you a friend but, uh, and, and so, so grateful that you joined us today on the podcast. And for those of you, again, that are listening, this was Eric Osberg of the Tampa Bay Rays. He can be found at Eric Osberg 21 Thank you so much, E. We wish you well. Uh, and before we wrap here, as always, folks, I can't tell you how appreciative I am of your time, uh, your attention, and your willingness uh, to listen to the podcast and share it with those that you love. As always, please like, comment, and share as you see fit. Be good to those you love, everybody. Let them know you love them. This is Johnny Martin signing off with another episode of Win Today. Thank you to Seven Roads Media and Cloud9 Marketing Group for co-producing the show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever platform you're on. Without you, I cannot continue to do what I love. You can follow me personally on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real John C. Martin. I'd love to hear from you, so please reach out with comments and questions after each episode. Your comments push me to get better every day. As always, thank you for your continued support, and don't forget, win today.